Hi, this is Billy Bean here with a World News Update. Today's date, April 9, 2024, post one day after the big eclipse. And the time is about 1 p.m. in Texas, episode 143. Some of the things we'll be covering. Scotland hates speech. And Iran preps for war versus Israel and Russia IDs who blew up the N1 N2 uh, pipeline and uh, Ukraine attacks the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and now a new US threat to Russia's LNG production facility so, some of my sources are God in the Bible, Patriot subscribers, uh, Breitbart, uh, Financial Times, AP, Forbes, Fox News, Joshua Phillip with Crossroads, War News 24-7, Hal Turner Plus. So, let's get started. Of all things, I've been hearing about, so we've got the U.S., Europe, We've got the UK, Scotland, a new law passed in Scotland, and they're trying to pass it in the U.S. Oh, if you say anything negative about uh, your neighbors or any group like the LBTQ group, well, you can be charged with a criminal offense. So I believe they're beta testing it in Scotland. The law's passed, and uh, now it's in effect. And over the past week, since the hate speech law went into effect, the Scotland police are overwhelmed with 8,000 phone calls. And Joshua Phillips with Crossroads brings this out. And that report came from Breitbart about the police receiving 8,000 calls. So Joshua Phillip also reports that just this week, since this hate speech law went into effect, I don't like my neighbor. My neighbor looked at me wrong. Like that. Uh, and TFF out of the UK went to Scotland to whip up a protest. And the Scottish people didn't take to that and chased them out of town. And the Antifa individuals, we know they're funded by uh, Soros, uh, dropped their cell phones. And they picked up their cell phones to see what they had on them. And uh, they found out that there were embedded within the Antifa group mainstream media journalists. Yeah, so that's going on. It's a crazy world. My neighbor looked at me wrong. So I'll call the police and file a complaint. I bet the police are overwhelmed. Uh, in fact, the Scottish police said, we're not able to do police work. We're just taking phone calls. And now we have this. So we've got Israel, Turkey, uh, going on. So Turkey and also we've got Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. So some nations who had signed a uh, treaty uh, that conventional armed forces could not be permanently stationed in Europe that was signed in 1997 or withdrawing. And that includes Turkey, Belarus, and other nations. Also Poland, the Czech Republic, and more NATO nations are believed to also withdraw. The CFE uh, prohibits the permanent deployment of troops in Eastern Europe. So all these nations are withdrawing and... Uh, Turkey and Belarus withdrew a effective April 8, 2024. So we see signs going on. 
And now we'll talk about uh, Israel. Apparently Israel is going to be struck pretty hard coming up. So we've got Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Iran. Okay. So Iran uh, on April 7 moved SAMS units, surface to air launchers uh, to their border. So right here. And uh, Iran is believed, uh, the Iran doesn't believe that the U.S. is also not going to respond with Israel against Iran once Iran attacks Israel, which is coming up probably tomorrow. So Hal Turner has this. So we had an abrupt withdrawal on April 7. So withdrawal of the IDF from Gaza. Uh, they left one brigade there. Uh, the cover story was they need to rest and recuperate, but Israel is uh, gearing up to be attacked by Lebanon, Syria, possibly Russia, and Iran, and Iraq. So that's going on. And now we have Forbes. Uh, on April 9, so they withdrew the troops, but this is coming out today, April 9, from Forbes, that Israel does plan to go ahead and attack Rafa. Rafa is right here, border of Gaza with Egypt. So, and now we have this from Hal Turner. So, on April 8, uh, in Syria, President Assad, his family, and his top layers of his uh, government went to a Russian bunker. Russia has a military base inside Syria, right about here. So, yesterday, April 8, Syrian President Assad family and top government go to bunker. On Israeli TV yesterday, uh, the Israeli government was advising Israeli citizens expect uh, for a hit in Tel Aviv. Iran uh, has also put in place a NOTAM over Iran. This happened yesterday and it's to go through April 11 of certain uh, routes inside Iran. And Iran gave the reason for the NOTAM shutting down that airspace is that Iran is going to be launching missiles. Now, it's believed that Iran is waiting for the end of Ramadan. That's a major Muslim religious observation that lasts several days. It's supposed to end uh, now Wednesday when they see a crescent moon. And that was slightly delayed by the eclipse. And we have Hezbollah is also inside Lebanon, a proxy for Iran, also to participate in the retaliation by Iran on Israel for Israel blowing up the uh, part of the Iranian embassy inside Syria, which is universally viewed as an act of war. And we have this. So the time. So currently we have... In Texas, the time is about 1 p.m. So in Iran, 
This would be about 10 p.m. So it's believed this uh, event could happen when the sun comes up in Iran. They'll see, or later tonight, they'll see the crescent moon. That will be the end of Ramadan. And Iran will attack Israel. And it's believed there will be multiple attacks upon Israel from Iran. We've already seen an attack by Iraq and Lebanon and Syria. And uh, most likely we have Saudi Arabia and down here we've got the Yemen Kudis. It's believed they're also currently attacking here or have done so in the last day. So that's going on. And now we have this. So I'll also bring up so we can prep to see Israel attack from several fronts within most likely the next 12 hours. So that's going on. We had another uh, attack upon a nation's embassy. This happened in, here's the U.S., Mexico, South America. This happened in Ecuador a few days ago and sounds bizarre. In Ecuador, uh, the Ecuador police attacked the Mexican embassy in Quito. And they went in uh, and arrested a former vice president of Mexico, Jorge Gloss, who uh, had been convicted or was on the verge of being con convicted of corruption charges in Mexico. So he fled from Mexico down to Quito, Ecuador, to the Mexican embassy uh, for asylum. But the Ecuador police, uh, at first the Ecuador military actually went into the embassy, and then the Ecuador police arrested Jorge Gloss and put him in jail. Naturally, the president of Mexico, Obrador, um, is fiercely uh, uh, contending against Ecuador now for this violation and has filed charges against Ecuador with the UN. So that's going on. Now we'll talk about Russia, Ukraine. Poland, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Germany, France. Okay. Uh, NATO troops, including U.S. military, so U.S. military plus NATO troops, are now moving into Moldova. So Moldova is right about here. This is Moldova. It's also believed that French and German troops are also moving into Ukraine, possibly in the Odessa area. So that's going on. But definitely we have U.S. military moving here into Moldova. Supposedly there's going to be a battle between U.S. military NATO and Russia when NATO and U.S. military try to uh, take this area, Transnistria, which is a Russian-affiliated group. Uh, Russia has um, ammo depot there. Russia has 1,500 Russian 
military station there. So uh, NATO has moved to Moldova, it's believed an attack uh, against Transnistria has already occurred. So Ukraine has already attacked Transnistria by drones that happened April 6th, so 8th, 7th, Saturday. And uh, we have also moving from Romania into Moldova, U.S. military, also French troops. And there has been a guerrilla attack on Odessa. And the guerrillas um, are not uh, a guerrilla attack in Odessa by a group called Clover Bridge. And that happened some time ago, March 17, uh, with Ukraine helicopters. April 1, we have two special force battalions, U.S., Romania, and so we have also, we have U.S. military, France, and we have Romanian troops also in Moldova. And they're beginning a joint exercise with Moldova, Special Forces, Folger, Scorpion, and Pantera. So that began April 1. U.S. military, French military, Romanian military went into Moldova to do an ex joint exercise with the Moldovan military. And now we have from Breitbart. And as I covered, uh, also Germany had withdrawn from that CFE treaty about permanently station, stationing troops in Eastern Europe. And now for the first time since World War II, Germany is permanently stationing troops in Lithuania. So we have Germany permanently stationing troops in Lithuania. And on Monday, April 8, uh, Germany moved their troops to a permanent station in Vilnius, Lithuania. Now we have this from War News. Yeah, Russia practices plane landings in Western uh, Russia preparatory to Russia uh, bringing about a military movement into Transnistria. So we see Russia practicing for Russian military to go into Transnistria, and that was on April 5. Transnistria is right next to Moldova where we have U.S. military, French, Germ, uh, and Romanian troops already in position. And now we have this. So there was an attack. So I'm going to move some of this. We know that certain areas, uh, Lithuania, uh, uh, Zaporizhia, Kherson, Donetsk had a referendum vote in 2022 to become part of Russia. Now, in Zaporizhia is uh, Europe's first or second largest nuclear power plant, and there's no disputing. Ukraine sent drones to attack a uh, spent uh, uh, nuclear rod storage area, which can also release radiation. Uh, that happened on Sunday, April 7. Ukraine hit 
are uh, damaged. Uh, the nuclear storage area, the IAEA, the International Nuclear uh, Group, that is stationed in the plant, as is the Russian military to protect the plant. The IAEA says <coughs> the Zeppronisa nuclear power plant is stabilized on April 9 this morning. And the IAEA says the world came close to a nuclear accident. And now we have in Belgorod, we see citizens and military in radiation hazmat suits, and they're being advised to carry RCBD kits, radiation detection kits. So yeah, the deep state, uh, operating uh, via the shadow NATO really wants World War III and they really want to reduce world population. What better way than to nuke a sizable area? So if that radiation had been released, it would have gone into Russia, Ukraine, and across Europe. So yeah, that's going on. And now we have this. So, we recall that the, I'll draw you another map. We have uh, Russia, Ukraine, we have Germany, this is Denmark, was close by. There was a uh, gas pipeline that ran from Russia to Germany called the N1, N2 pipeline that was blown up. And it's widely believed that the U.S. Uh, had primary responsibility for it. Now, Russia is publicly coming out, uh, making formal requests to multiple governments for information and this includes the u.s germany france and cyprus and russia is publicly putting out this information they have identified that it was uh, put together by a ukraine group so ukraine uh, did most of the training for the divers that took place and taking out the N1, N2 it was underneath water. And they're saying that uh, the U.S., uh, this, this operation was uh, in Ukraine. The training of the divers was under the direct supervision of the U.S. ambassador in Kiev. Christopher W. Smith, and in Ukraine, uh, G.U.R. Budanov was also involved. And they did a lot of the training in Ukraine and Romania. Then they went to Poland and rented a yacht, the Andromeda, the leader uh, from Ukraine of the special operation is Roman Chervinsky. Also another Ukrainian, Katznazov Sergei Anatolievich. And also Anatoly Avanovich Bergomostranko. Three divers, including Olaf Varanva, a female diver, uh, codename Marisha, and another Ukrainian diver, codename Chaplin. So we see Russia coming out with information publicly about who blew up 
their N1, N2 pipeline. Now that happened in 2022. Prior to that, we had probably about in 2021, we had JB, the actor wearing a mask, masquerading as the president of the U.S. And we had Victoria Newland of the Shadow U.S. State Department on video make public statements that the U.S. would not uh, allow the N1, N2 pipeline to continue to pop. No, because the deep state also had the objective to destroy the economy of Germany and Europe. So that's going on. Now we have this new threat by the shadow U.S. State Department against an, a Russian called the Arctic uh, LNG2 project in west located in western Siberia. So we have another public statement by the shadow US State Department to destroy and take out the Arctic LNG2 project located inside Russia. This statement is being made by Jeffrey Pratt and is reported by Financial Times and other mainstream media outlets. Yeah, so that's going on. So we see uh, many pieces uh, op pulled and operated by the deep state for war, war, war. War in Israel versus Iran, Lebanon, Syria, Russia, Iraq, war in the Ukraine, a NATO and the U.S. versus Russia. So, a short prayer. I'll use the uh, World War II prayer. Oh, I have this also, breaking news just published this morning of an incident that happened on Saturday, April 6. Iraq attacks Israel and kills four Israeli commandos. Now, this sounds like it was Iraq working with Hamas. But this is just being published, so we have Israel, Gaza, Hamas, Jordan, Iraq. So it was uh, using Iranian missiles by the Islamic resistance out of Iraq. And it sounds as if they were working with Hamas. And on Saturday, they killed four Israeli commandos. But they're just now coming out with that. And also Hezbollah appears to have been involved in this attack also in the Golan Heights area. So we see on Saturday there was coordinated attack on Israel by Hamas. Iraqi resistance, and also Hezbollah that resulted in the killing of four Israeli commandos. So now a short prayer. I'll use the World War II uh, General Patton prayer. Father, we ask that you grant us fair weather for battle, guide us from victory to victory, and crush our enemies, domestic, foreign, and off-world. And we say thank you, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, who many call Yeshua, and God the Holy Spirit. I say to my family and friends, remain steady out there, continue to pray. God is in charge, and He is on the move. I love you, and I'll see you soon.